सो हे स्टूडेंट दिस इज बसवराज दिस इज गोपिका वी आर योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर्स वेलकम बैक टू वेदांत नीट इंग्लिश यस so students today we are doing one of the most important thing that is your cbse sample paper 2023-24 very important for both students yes. because you will understand the, the pattern, pattern and yeah. the, how your questions are framed exactly students here the maximum marks is going to be 70 marks and the time is going to be 3 hours once you're in complete 3 hours here general instructions quickly read them that is all questions are compulsory remember there is no multiple options here Yes, and students, the question paper has five sections. That is A, B, C, D, E, and it has around thirty-three questions, and all the questions are compulsory. I'm basically okay? writing writing again. All yeah. questions are compulsory. Yes, because students have a notion, no, that yeah. we have a lot of options, yes. so I can skip like maybe two, three chapters, but it's not no. happening. Okay, so let me say section A has sixteen questions of one mark. That means your MCQ. MCQ. Okay, yes. and section B has five questions of two marks. Again, the explanation, question answers type. That is two marks. Yes. Then we have section C, which is the highest weight weightage, where you have seven questions, three marks each. Very important section. Then we have section D, which is the newly introduced one, that is case based study questions, which is going to be a little tricky. But if you understand the question, it's going to be extremely easy. Then we have section number E, that is three questions of five marks each. Where you need to draw the diagrams and everything. Yes, students understand there is no overall choices. You cannot skip a part or you cannot skip a session. True. But you have internal choices. That means between two questions, maybe you can uh, choose or one. Option, or, or option. Or option, option will option always be there. Yeah. But you are requested to take one of the options. Like you cannot write the both. Like, yeah, you cannot write both. It will not be checked. Okay. True. So yes. Last point here is. The Whenever necessary, neat and label proper diagram. This yeah. is not a neat examination where you can just tick the tick or circle. You have to write descriptively and also draw the diagrams, especially for the five marks here. Yes. So, ma'am, can we start the section A? Yes. So, ma'am will be starting section A. Then I will be following section B. Then section C, section D, and section E. That's okay. going to be the entire flow for today's. So. Yes. Okay. So, students, the most trickiest part of the paper is your MCQ, right? Because you might know the explanation, but you might know not know which is the correct option. right so we will try to understand okay students so let's start with part a so part a you have 16 questions which are mcqs okay so first question is remnant of mucilage are persistent during seed development in that means the mucilage is persistent in which of these examples i have told you to remember this you have to remember one second okay you will have to remember b2 right that is your black pepper and beet so the answer is d Okay, next one. The wall layer of microsporangium which nourishes the pollen grain. All of you know, elephant eats my tomato. Out of that, the last one, tomato, tea, tapetum. That is the only one that nourishes, right? That nourishes. So, which is the one tapetum? It also has dense cytoplasm. It is multi-nucleated. It also helps in the formation of sporopollenin and helps in the synthesis of callase enzyme, which will actually help in the separation of the microspores. All this in detail, I have done the class. reproduction flowering plants okay now a short piece of dna having 20 base pairs okay very important 20 base pairs was analyzed to find out the number of nucleotide bases in each of the polynucleotide strands some of the results are shown in the table so look here students we have adenine cytosine guanine and thymine so according to chagas rule we know two things okay that is a will always bind with t and g will always bind with c how do you remember it at gopika ma'am's class okay now A and by two. So how many adenines will be there? That many thymines will be there. How many guanines will be there? That many cytosines will be there. Purines is always equal to pyrimidines. Okay, this is what you know from the Chagas rule. Now you look here. In strand one, we have four adenines. That means in strand two, right? In strand two, how many thymines will be there? Four, obvious, right? Because they have to bind. Okay. Now that is clear. Now look here. Cytosine is four in strand one. Cytosine binds with guanine. So then how many will be there in strand two? Again, four will be there. Okay. Now, cytosine is five in strand two. How many will be there in five? Okay, sorry. How many will be there in strand one? Five. So this much we did. Now they are asking us to find the adenine in strand two. Now, students, total is twenty base pairs. Okay. So out of that, we have done four plus four plus five. Okay, thirteen. So twenty minus thirteen will give you how many? Seven. So seven will be the number of adenine. Okay, seven. Will be the number of adenine. How many adenines are there? That many thymines will be there. So here also seven. Okay. Finally, we have twenty base pairs. Clear? So the answer is seven. That is option D.
Now, in certain species of insects, some have 13 chromosomes and the others have 14 chromosomes. The 13 and the 14 chromosome bearing organisms. So, they are asking, depending on the number, you have to tell if it's male, female, okay, which among this. Now, all of you know, in males, okay, if autosomal is there, say 12 in males, okay, and females, both will have 12. Or you can have your XO and XX condition, right? One X will be always more in females. So, if I write that way, I will write... 12 plus 1 and here I write 12 plus 2. That means here I have 13 chromosomes, here I have 14 chromosomes. So, female will always have an upper hand. One X will be more. So, can it be 14? So, I can write males and females respectively. Okay. Now, at a particular locus, the frequency of allele A is 0 0.8 and that of allele small a is 0 0.2. What would be the frequency of heterozygous in the random mating population in equilibrium? So, we know according to hardy Weinberg equation, we have p square plus q square plus 2pq right so these will be homozygous this is heterozygous so what are they asking us to find heterozygous okay so i will do 2 into capital a that is 0 0.8 into small a 0 0.2 will give me the heterozygous value how much will this be 0 0.32 let's see if 0 0.32 is there yes option a 0 0.32 clear Okay, now variation caused due to mutation. So, students, here we are only going to bother about one person that is your Hugo de Veris. Okay, he is the only one we are going to bother about. This person has told that mutations are random and they do not have any direction. So, which among this? Random and directional, random and directional, random and small, random, small and direction. So, it is random and direction okay now what is the smallest part of the dna molecule that changed by a point mutation so students if you know snp size single nucleotide polymorphism also if you know um, point mutation you will know that instead of guanine if adenine is binding or instead of thymine thymine is binding one of the nucleotide change it can cause point mutation like sickle cell anemia right so the smallest part of the dna will be what a nucleotide a nucleotide is more than enough okay a nucleotide is okay a nucleotide is more than enough for making a change yes what should be the genotype of an indicated member so this is the question mark indicated member okay now this is an autosomal recessive disease because the parents are not affected autosomal recessive okay so here students the parents can be capital a small a capital a small a okay if you do the variation i have taught this in principles of inheritance i had taken a class on ncrt line by line there we had discussed this so this will be uh, small a small a small a small a so the answer is d okay option d yes now a patient was advised to have a kidney transplant to suppress the immune reaction the doctor would administer so understand whenever we have to protect our uh, from graft rejection right from graft rejection you should understand that we need to give an immunosuppressant which is cyclosporin a now what is the confusing part here they have given cyclosporin a produced by trichodum or polysporum cyclosporin a produced by colostridium so you should know that cyclosporin a is produced by trichodum which we learned in microbes chapter so cyclosporin a will be given as an immunosuppressant so that the body does not reject the graft okay now identify the activity of an endonuclease and exonuclease students endo means inside okay exo means outside one will cut, cut in the terminal, one will cut in the center. That is all you focus. Looking at the diagram, don't faint. Okay, it is a very simple diagram. Let's look here. Here you see endonuclease is cutting in the center. Exonuclease is cutting at the terminal. Okay, here endonuclease is cutting at the terminal. Exonuclease is cutting at the center. Wrong. Correct. Okay. Here same thing. Endonuclease is cutting at the terminal. Exonuclease is cutting at the center. Again a wrong diagram. Here if you see endonuclease is cutting at the center, exonuclease is cutting at the terminal, correct. Now depending if they ask you which strand to which strand, is it 3 dash to 5 dash or 5 dash to 3 dash, it is not mentioned in your NCRT that endonuclease will always cut from which side and which side is correct. So both the options are correct, okay. You can go for option D according to your answer booklet or option A also is correct because the location is the right, where they are cutting is right, okay. Now only the direction is not mentioned. Now. The main objective of production of pest resistant genetically modified crops. Okay, mainly what is their goal? 
all the points given here are correct if you notice if you read all the points but their main goal is to reduce the pesticide accumulation in the food chain okay because if you see encourage eco-friendly pesticide yes good thing eliminate pests from the field without the use of manual labor retain maximum nutritional content in the crop that would be otherwise consumed by the pest right to all the points are correct but the main goal is to reduce the pesticide accumulation in the food chain yes Observe the content 1, 2, 3, 4 of the soil sample A, B, C shown in the figure, temperature and the moisture, okay, and which soil sample will have faster decomposition rate, okay. Now, let's see what are the things that they've used, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. One is lignin, okay. Second, second is chitin, third is nitrogen. Okay, for the sugar. So, out of this student, this two will do slow decomposition. This two will help in fast decomposition. Now, you have to find out in which of the graphs, 3 and 4 is showing the bigger graph. Okay, if you look here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. If you see, the third one is showing 3 and 4 at the highest bar, right? So, soil C is the sample which will do fastest decomposition because of the presence of nitrogen and sugar and those two graphs are bigger, okay? Yes. Question number 13 to 16 are assertion and reasoning question. So, we have to solve this. I will write the answer here only, okay? I will give you explanation also. First one, primary endosperm nucleus is deployed. And the reason given is it is a product of double fertilization. All of you know GC, that is your male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote. Okay. Again, the one male gamete GC will fuse with the polar nuclei to form your pen or your endosperm. Now, all of us know that this 1 plus 2, this is a triploid. Three nucleus, right? So, this is a triploid, not a diploid. So, what will be the answer here, students? A is false, but R is true. Yes, it is a product of double fertilization. We know this is the double fertilization. So, the answer is D. Okay, answer is D. Now, ribosomal RNA is synthesized in the nucleus of the cell. Yes, we know central dogma. All of that know. All of us know. Okay. Now, it is translated with the enzyme RNA polymerase 3. Now, let me tell you, we know RMT. Who is RMT? RMT 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, students, what is RMT? R stands for RRNA, M stands for mRNA, T stands for tRNA. RRNA is formed by RNA polymerase 1, mRNA 2 and tRNA 3. Here the question is, it is translated with the enzyme RNA polymerase 3, which is wrong. It is translated with the help of RNA polymerase 1. Look here, RNA polymerase 1. So, which is the uh, first one is, so assertion is true, but R is false. Okay. Assertion is true, but R is false. Now, smoking can raise blood pressure and increase heart rate. Reason, nicotine stimulates, okay, so the reason is nicotine stimulates adrenal glands to release adrenaline and non-adrenaline into the blood circulation, both of which raise blood pressure and increase heart rate. Both are correct because students, in smoking, the main person is the villain is nicotine. Nicotine will increase blood circulation, so the answer is option A. Both assertion and reason is right. Now, PCR is a powerful technique to identify genetic disorder. Yes, when we learned all the types of genetic disorder, we know that PCR was a very powerful technique. Now, PCR can detect mutation in low amounts of DNA, okay? Yes, PCR can detect, okay, in low amounts of DNA and also PCR can make million copies of DNA, okay, with a small amount. So, that's why, again, option A, okay, option A. Now, sir, we'll be doing section B, okay? Now, students, we'll be doing the section number B. That is two mark questions. We'll be solving two mark questions. Let's see the read the question first and let me tell you the answer. The question goes like, explain the process of hormonal regulation of spermatogenesis. Now, how do you do this in the normal class? Let me quickly tell you. So, in the case of female, oogenesis starts at the embryonic stage. But in the case of male, the spermatogenesis starts at the puberty. Now, during the puberty, what happens? There is sudden increase in the level of certain types of hormones. That is, gonadotropin releasing hormone, GnRH, will shoot up during the puberty. Let me take a blank screen, it will be easier to explain. Now, during the puberty, GnRH will completely increase. Now, GnRH will 
stimulate gnrh will stimulate on the anterior pituitary yes it will stimulate the anterior pituitary now this anterior pituitary will act on two tropins that is nothing but the fsh as well as the lh that is follicular stimulating hormone lh is nothing but luteinizing hormone now here's the trick remember always i've told you the s here stands for sertoli cells and the l here stands for ladig cell ladig and this sertoli cell this sertoli cell is responsible for spermiogenesis not spermatogenesis sertoli cells are also called as nerve cells which help in spermiogenesis that is development of the sperm and the finally the ladig cells ladig cells will help in secretion of the androgen in the case of male that is nothing but the testosterone let's look at the answer the simple flow chart which will help you to understand the hormonal changes let's see what is given here spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty due to the significant increase of secretion of gnrh that is gonadotropin releasing hormone this is a hypothalamic hormone that gopika have told you the increased levels of gnrh then acts on the anterior pituitary not posterior remember on the anterior pituitary gland and stimulates the secretion of two gonadotropins that is nothing but lh as well as the fsh that is luteinizing hormone as well as follicular stimulating hormone remember the flow chart here now lh i told you l for ladic cell acts on the ladic cells which secretes the testosterone which is a type of androgen here stimulate the synthesis of androgen with example is testosterone androgen in turn stimulate the process of spermatogenesis androgen is involved in the spermatogenesis then what about fsh fsh will act on the your cert sorry uh, certainly cells act on the sertoli cells see here the s stands for sertoli cells here and stimulate the secretion of the some factors which help in spermiogenesis not spermatogenesis please remember this sertoli cells are involved in the spermiogenesis not spermatogenesis clear first question done let's go to the next question now the next question is right here the diagram below shows the sequence of amino acid part of hemoglobin molecule here we have a complete chain of amino acids for hemoglobin. We have given valine, histidine, leucine, isoleucine, everything is given here. The key is also given here. Okay, let's see to the question. If the base thymine star was substituted with A, how would it affect the hemoglobin chain? All they are asking you is if they have already put in star here. Can you see the star here? In this CTT, if I replace the T with A, what happens? C A T. Yes, CTT becomes C A T. Now we know here from the key here, CTT stands for glutamic acid. C C CTT stands for glutamic acid. So what will happen? It'll glutamic acid to the conversion from this is CTT to C A T. That is glutamic acid to conversion to what is CAT anywhere is given? CAT yeah, is given here. What is CAT? Key is given as VAL. What is VAL? Valine. That is glutamic acid to valine. This is the simple change which is happening. If you convert, if you change the T here to A, it becomes CAT and CAT codes for valine. You do not have to remember any of this. It will be given in your examination. Can you see? Entire key is given, entire diagram is given. So option number A is done. That is, if the base T was substituted with A, how would it affect the hemoglobin chain? At the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. At the sixth position, we will have valine. Sixth position will have valine. And this is a type of point mutation. Some type of mutation will take place. Now, that is the answer here in the P part. Name the condition and the effect associated with the above substitution. And if you have read the chapter, right? You know, because of certain change in the amino acid, just in one amino acid, this can cause a fatal disease called as sickle cell anemia. In the sickle cell anemia, the normal, handsome RBC cell, biconcave sh shaped cell becomes like sickle shaped cell. Becomes sickle shaped cell. That is called sickle cell anemia. Let's read the answer here. It's given here. Let's read the answer. What is given here? Raise the all. 
CTT would become CAT, yes, which quotes for valine now. This valine would be replaced by glutamic acid. Valine would be replacing the glutamic acid at sixth position. Sickle cell anemia, the see, can you see the marks? If you just write sickle cell anemia, you will get 0.5 marks. The mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes polymerization. Yes, it becomes mutant now. It is undergoing mutation because of the change in amino acid now. Leading to the change in the shape of the RB cell cell. All the way from the biconcave structure to the sickle shaped cell. That is biconcave disc shoe elongated sickle like structure. Second question done. Let's go to third question now. Again a diagram based question. The graph given below indicates the administration of the first and second dose of vaccine. Just like your COVID vaccine. We had first dosage, second dosage. Then we also had a booster dosage. Yes, we had. Now here, this L. L is the first dosage. And Y right here is the second dosage. Clear? Now let's read the question further. The corresponding response of the body is indicated by the X. This is the effect of the first dosage. And Y. Y is the one second students it's more one second this is the first dosage is the x this is the second dosage this is the second dosage so x is the effect of the first dosage and y is the effect of the second dosage okay the corresponding response of the body indicates by x and y x and y are the body responding to it remember when you got the covid vaccine for the first time did you start shivering whole night you felt sick a little bit that is your body response, right? Interpret the graph and explain the reason for such a response shown by the body. Now, all they're asking you is when the first dosage was applied, why this, this reaction by the body? And the second dosage was applied, why is your body reacting to it more? That is, when an X reaction is nothing but less number of antibody. That is, concentration of antibody is a little bit less. But in the second response, the concentration of antibody is increasing in the body, in the Y. Now, what is this magic? Magic is nothing. Here, what they're trying to tell you is, when the first dosage was given, that the first dosage actually had a weakened, you know, completely weak virus or a bacteria or virus in most cases, weak virus. And when this weak virus was injected into your body, your body fought for it. And your body easily won the war won the battle not the war there it won the battle easily because it was a very weak enemy now the body remembers that as this was the enemy this was the weapons he had this is the guns he had this is the arrow he had next time the same enemy when the next time the same enemy is coming in the different form here it was yellow form here it is coming as m m form now this time body will fight more aggressively because we know our body knows all the tactics of this virus that is why in the second time second time when the same virus is attacking our body when the vaccine is applied your body will fight it stronger remember when the first time you took the covid vaccine you felt more sick but the second time you were a little bit better you didn't feel that sick because your body was ready for that vaccine that is the answer here and the first response here is called as the primary response here okay let's see the answer see on the administration of the first dosage of the vaccine that is yellow the body showed a response of low intensity, very low intensity response. That's why you felt more sick. As immune system comes in contact with the antigenic protein of the weakened inactive pathogen for the first time. It is interacting for the first time. Body is not able to fight properly to, with the vaccine, with the weakened structure. Now, this is called as the primary immune response, which is, which is the X here. Now, on the, sub, on the subsequent encounter with the same antigen, when the same antigen, when the same antigen, not antigen, antigenic protein, the same virus when it's coming for the second time, your body is ready now. Yes. In the second dosage, yeah, the body elicits a high intensity secondary response, complete second response. And because of the second response, you do not feel sick that much. Clear? And because of the memory of the first contact with the antigen, the the second immune response is faster and stronger leading to more effective pathogen elimination so that is why in the second time your body is reacting it faster and stronger because your body remembers the battle clear that is your 19th question let's go to 20th question again a diagram based question are you noticing 
three in a row. <laughs> yes, third is the lucky one. Again, easy question. Don't worry. Even if the diagram based question, extremely easy. What is the question here? The image below shows the result of plating bacteria in a chromogenic medium. Now, first of all, what is a chromogenic medium? Chromogenic medium is a colorful medium which will impart color. The medium which will impart color after incorporation of gene of interest in a plasmid. So we have different plates here after after adding the gene of interest. Some plates had blue colonies. Some plate had white colonies. That is basically your blue and white colony screening method. A single bacterium extracted from the plate 1, 2, 3 is shown below. So we have first we have the bacteria. We have the plasmid. On this plasmid we are add, adding a gene of interest. And this is your vector which has been injected to the bacterium. We have plate number A, plate number B and plate number C. Let's read the question now. On the basis of your observation, identify the plate which is or are white give reason. Simple. Quickly, I will tell you quickly, listen to my words here. In the first case, do you see the gene of interest attached to the plasmid? Yes. Now students, remember, on this plasmid, on top of this plasmid, there is a region which codes for beta galactosidase enzyme. Now what happens here is, once this gene of interest is going and sitting on this region here, here, it is like, this is your, and this is the region of the plasmid which is codes for beta galoxidase. The gene of interest is coming and completely covering on top of it. Now, will this be activated? Do you have beta galoxidase? It won't be activated because the gene of interest is sitting on top of it. Hence, hence, all the colonies will be white in this case because this enzyme here is responsible for blue colonies, blue colonies. So, every single time there is beta galoxidase enzyme in normal condition, we get blue colonies in normal condition. In normal condition. But in the plate A, in the plate A, can we see the gene of interest is sitting on top of the plasmid? It means the gene responsible for the beta galoxidase enzyme is completely inactivated by the gene of interest. This is called as insertional inactivation. So as soon as we add the gene of interest, this particular region is completely masked and therefore beta galoxidase enzyme is inactive. No more blue colonies because of that. Clear? So which are the white colonies? Plate number A will have white colonies. Now what about plate number 2 and plate number 3? Can you see in plate number 2, we have the plasmid. The plasmid, do we have gene of interest here? No. So do we get white colonies? No. Is the enzyme active? Yes. So if the enzyme is active, blue colonies, blue colony. What about plate number three? In plate number three, we don't even have the back. We don't even have the plasmid here. So normal condition will be working. Let's see the answer here. Plate number A. Yes, beta galoxidase enzyme is responsible for the blue colonies. Gene is inserted in the beta galoxidase site of the plasmid, thereby causing the insertional inactivation of the enzyme. So enzyme has been completely inactivated here. So we'll get white colonies in the plate number A. So no blue color colonies. What about plate number two? That is identify the plate which is blue. Obviously plate number two because gene of interest is not inserted in the plasmid. And also plate number three, there is no plasmid at all. So blue colonies. Clear? Now let's see question number 21. Very important question. Very important question. Again, it is not a diagram based question, but it is a question where you draw the diagram. Let's see the question. Biomass of a standing crop of a phytoplankton is 4 kg per meter square, which is supposed a large standing crop of your zooplankton. So we have phytoplankton, we have zooplanktons. Having a biomass of 11 kg. This is consumed by a small fish having 25 kg per meter square, which is then consumed by the large fish of a large fish of it by a mass of 37 kg per meter square. Draw ecological pyramid indicating the biomass at each stage. Also name the tropic levels. Mention whether it is the upright or inverted. So remember students, biomass in this case where the biomass of the the last large fishes is larger. Hence, in this case, the entire pyramid will be inverted. That is, see if you look at the last fishes which has the highest, highest uh, biomass will be at the top. 
Then we have the small fishes, zooplanktons and phytoplanktons. And what is the tropic level? Tropic level is nothing but the position of a particular organism in a food chain. That is the tropic level. Obviously, the phytoplankton and planktons will do photosynthesis. Primary producers are eaten by the primary consumers, that is the zooplanktons, secondary consumers, and finally the tertiary consumers. Now let's read the second part of the question. Using the information provided in the table given below, answer the following question. Again, a table-based question. Do you see? They're not making your life easy. They're giving you diagram-based question. They're giving you so many tables. Are you trying to find the answer? Here, they have given you tropic levels, top carnivores, carnivores, herbivores, producers. They have given you net production. What is net production? Net production is nothing but cross production minus the respiratory loss. That will give you the net production. Then also given you the respiration, which is the consumption of energy or loss of energy. Calculate the gross primary productivity. First question. I already told you what is gross primary productivity. Gross primary productivity is nothing but your net productivity plus the respiration. Simple. Gross is the total. Gross means total. So all you need to do is add, add these two. That is nothing but your four five zero 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 four zero three six seven. We get seven six three five four eight eight five three six seven. That is your gross primary productivity. Now option would be analyze the trend in the net production from the producers to the top carnivores asking you to find a trend here do you see a trend here yes that is in the case of net productivity it is the highest in the producers and as we go the top of the food chain do you see the net productivity is decreasing that is the energy available for the top carnivores is actually the lowest that is at every tropic level there is a decrease in energy that is nothing but your 10% law which they are trying to tell you here. Clear? That is the answer here. Can you see? The gross primary productivity is given here. Oh, remember I did not write the, the value here. Please write down. Okay? The net productivity is gradually reducing as we move from the producers to the consumers due to the heat loss or respiration. That is nothing but your 10% law. Now we will be studying section number C. If you want, ma'am, I will explain the whole question if you want. Yeah, you can go for it. You do thought you will do it. Okay. So, so I'll be teaching you, I'll do one question, then ma'am can start the chapter, uh, section number C. The question is like, the figure given below shows three sperms A, B and C. We have sperm A, let me change the color ma'am, sperm A, sperm B and sperm C. Which one of the three sperms will gain entry into the ovum? They're like, no. Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, only one of them will enter, not everyone is not allowed inside the house. Yes. Okay. Now, um, let's put Lord, Gipong, okay, no? okay. so A. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here, oh, the sperm A is actually coming in contact with the ovum's zona pellucida layer. It's coming in contact. So that is the option number A, that is the sperm A is coming in contact. Describe the association changes induced by the P and Q. That is what are the changes in the zona pellucida layer along the plasma membrane and what are the changes in the ovum. Okay, so the first change here, as soon as the sperm is coming in contact with the membrane here, there is a complete depolarization of the membrane and because of depolarization, because of the opening of the sodium channels, no other sperm can enter inside. Blockage. Complete block, like right? door is shut now. <laughs> yeah. Door is shut. So because of that, there will, there will be change in the membrane here. What are the changes in the Q then? Secondary oocyte, something so, like that. <laughs> so the Q right here is the secondary oocyte and this secondary oocyte, remember, it is arrested at a metaphase or oh, secondary oocyte is arrested at the metaphase as soon as the sperm comes in contact with the ovum the secondary oocyte the second meiosis is completed which will result in the ooted as well as the second polar body and this ooted will come in contact with the nuclei of the sperm which will result in fertilization and zygote formation yes so <laughs> i just want to take one question so i took past one question okay so, thank you sir let's <laughs> Go. So let's see if all the whatever I think sir mentioned everything. So sperm A is the correct one. Okay, in the figure, sperm A comes in contact. So what will happen? Blockage. That means entry of additional sperms will not happen. That is induced changes. Block. Okay, these are the keywords, and only one sperm will enter inside. Now the secretion of the acrosome. That is what sir told. The head, right? The head of the sperm. As soon as it 
enters into the cytoplasm of the ovum through the zona pellicid. Pellicida, the plasma membrane will induce the completion of the mitotic division, forming of the secondary oocyte, that is the Q, the center. Okay. Now, because of that, what is going to happen? Uh, your polar body will be formed and then division will happen, resulting in the formation of a zygote, diploid zygote. Clear? Yes. Now, explain the phases in the embryonic development from morula stage till the establishment, okay, till the establishment of pregnancy in a fe human female, okay. So, morula stage, you have 8 to 16 cells, yes. So, look here, the embryo has 8 to 16 blastomias, okay, which is called the morula stage. Now, what will happen? The morula will continuously divide, okay, and it will form the blastocyst. Okay, as it moves further into the uterus. Okay, so continuous division is happening. Morula, blastula, gastrula, all this is happening. But as of now in your textbook, only morula is mentioned. But later, it continues division to form blastocyst. Okay, now what is going to happen, students? The cells will be formed. That is your blastomeres. The blastomeres in the blastocyst are arranged in an outer layer called the trophoblast. Very, very important. Okay. So, what will happen? All the cells will arrange themselves to form one layer called the trophoblast. Inside this, who we have? So, an inner group of cells are attached to the trophoblast, which is called your inner cell mass. Okay. Inner cell mass. Now, this trophoblast layer then gets attached to where? The endometrium because it is getting ready for pregnancy, for implantation to happen. Right. So, what will happen? This trophoblast trophoblast layer then gets attached to the endometrium and the inner cell mass gets differentiated as the embryo okay differentiated as the embryo after attachment the uterine cells divides rapidly and covers the blastocyst okay all this is done for the preparation they're preparing the entire womb for the baby to be you know implanted right as a result, the blastocyst becomes embedded in the endometrium of the uterus and this is called as implantation and it leads to pregnancy. Clear? Easy? Okay, so students look here, you can see the mark division, okay? 0 0.5 into 6, so they expect half marks for each point. So that's all, only half marks is there, so make sure you are including the keywords, not writing random things, okay? Write only the keywords, okay? So here you can see the keywords I have underlined, modular, blastosis, blastomia, trophoblast, inner cell mass. Then again you have uh, differentiation, okay, differentiation to form the embryo, embedded in the endometrium, uterus, and then leads to implantation and pregnancy pregnancy these are the keywords that's all okay yes let's go a pregnant human okay pregnant female okay was advised to undergo mtp what is mtp medical termination okay medical termination of pregnancy okay now, this is done. MTP is mainly done during rape. Okay, during rape cases or if there is a genetic disorder during the scan, if they see that the child have any genetic disorder, okay, and the survival rate is very less, then they will use MTP. Now, here, what have they told? It was diagnosed that the fetus she was carrying had a development, developed from a zygote having 45 chromosomes. Okay, how much it has? 45 chromosomes only with one X chromosome. That means this person has what? Turner syndrome. Okay, the child has Turner syndrome. Okay, the child will be sterile, right? Now, what is this condition called? Okay, yes, the condition is Turner syndrome. Now, and how does it arise? Why was she advised to undergo MTP? So, MTP is mainly asked when there is a rape case or when there is a genetic disorder and they realize that the entire family is going to suffer and even the child is going to suffer. So, they will be like, go for MTP. Okay. Now, students. Yes, here, look here. I wrote it on this one second. Yes, okay. Look here. The embryo has Turner syndrome. Okay, the embryo has Turner syndrome. That means one chromosome is lacking, right? It's 45. So, due to aneuploidy of the sex chromosome, such a disorder is due to the absence of one of the X chromosome. That is 45 with XO. Okay, 45 with XO. Now, why is she advised to have MTP? She is asked to do MTPs because 
these are the things that will be there in the fetus which cannot be rectified bro so what are the things first thing the child might have rudimentary ovaries that's why i told you she uh, she will be completely sterile okay poorly developed breast okay the secondary sexual characters also will not arise well now lack of other secondary sexual characters delayed or onset of menstrual cycle menstrual cycle can happen but it can be a lot later or menstrual cycle completely stops like it does not happen at all okay and infertility so if these conditions are there why would the doctor not ask to do M uh, mtp the doctor will definitely tell please do mtp there are a lot of cases where they cannot identify during the scan and then later you know maybe uh, when they scan the baby was okay and later in the stages some kind of changes happen so these cases also a lot of a lot of people are there who have turner syndrome okay and uh, you have you seen the moon shaped face people okay so th those kind of things happen now the graph below shows three types of natural selection three types of natural selection the shaded areas marked with arrows show the individuals in the population which are not selected okay the shaded areas marked with arrows show that the individuals are not selected okay the dotted vertical lines show the statistical means now what names are given to the types of selection shown in a b and c after selection has operated for several generation in the above population indicated as graph a graph b and graph c illustrate the probable result okay so students um say it is the we can take this as a pond okay so in a pond you will have small fishes okay you will have medium fishes you will have large fishes okay three types of can be that in the first one if you see you can see that both the right they are stabilized that means say if i take small and large both of them are in equal number so this is a stabilizing graph stabilizing here if you see this side is not selected so say now only one side it is okay one side this is this is you have disruptive and directional so this will be what direction okay only one of them are selected maybe the medium fishes are selected okay small and large are not selected here if you see students both the sides right that means two types are selected they both are uh, in equal numbers here what ha it happens is this is the disruptive one. So here maybe the small and the large fishes are selected the medium ones are not selected okay so this way you can see here small one is out okay here if you see we can take the small and the large okay or the corners that means what is happening stabilizing there is a rate there's an equal or equivalent rate here if you see one is one is completely removed okay one is completely removed so it is directional then if here if you see one whole chunk like a big chunk of one portion is completely removed this is disruptive let's see if we are correct okay yes look here students graph a is stabilizing graph b is directional graph c is disruptive okay see look here stabilizing directional that means one direction to one direction disruptive there are two graphs right small also is there large also is both are equivalent but one one is completely removed because it is not at all naturally selected clear clear okay yes the aeration tank of a sewage treatment plant is not functional properly. Explain in detail the impact of this on the treatment of the sewage and the BOD. First of all, you know, aeration tank is very important, right? Because our primary uh, effluent will have to be passed to the aeration tank for the secondary treatment or the biological treatment. Now, in the aeration tank, we expect the aeration tank to be continuously pumped with air air pumping has to happen same way mechanical mixing should happen okay continuously mechanical right mechanical mixing should happen now if the aeration plant is not functional properly and if air is not pumped okay imagine air is not pumped what can happen students first thing that can happen is if air is not pumped or if there is no oxygen okay oxygen is less then no formation of flops okay flops or your useful okay useful aerobic bacteria will not grow 
अग्री यूजफुल एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया विल नॉट ग्रो ओके क्लियर यस देन सेकेंड थिंग इफ क्लॉक्स और यूजफुल एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया आर नॉट ग्रोन then that means your organic matter is not consumed so bod uh, level remains the same okay same now what's the point okay what's the point we have to reduce the bod level okay if you reduce the bod level only we will understand if the organic matter has reduced or not so it will affect the bod level that means how much of our was there in the primary um, effluent that much only will be there at the end also because aeration tank is not working flocks have not been formed those aerobic bacteria have not started consuming on the organic matter so the entire biological treatment will be flop okay so let's see and uh, what is the impact on the treatment of sewage it's gone totally gone okay yes okay look here it is uh, it adversely affects the secondary treatment or your biological treatment yes completely okay look here when the aeration tank is not functional the air will not be pumped into it this will not allow vigorous growth of aerobic microbes okay or your flocks right here they get into flocks okay now if flocks are not formed then what will happen it will not consume the organic matter now the bod level of the effluent will not be reduced at all the bod refers to the amount of oxygen we know no biochemical oxygen demand right Uh, more the BOD, more the organic matter is how we understand, right? More the BOD, less the dissolved oxygen. Okay, always BOD is more. That means purity of the water is less. Okay, even though you cannot see anything, like you cannot see the waste materials or you are not able to see something, that is a different thing. Okay, BOD, dissolved oxygen level means what? You cannot see the organic matter, but how do you know if there is a lot of organic matter? when bod is high when bod is high do will be less dissolved oxygen will be less D dissolved oxygen is actually how we understand the purity of water yes okay fine so bod will remain the same the greater the bod of the waste water the more it's the uh, polluting potential thus the effluent will remain polluted with a high amount of organic matter so totally sewage uh, your entire secondary treatment has gone flop okay has gone flop again students see, see here six points are mentioned only half marks for each point so all your three mark questions are divided into so for all three mark question so for all three mark question you are expected to write six points okay and each points are only carrying half mark okay so this is why you should have a planning that is how they expect you to complete the paper in 3 hours clear if you keep writing story you will never complete the paper now a farmer grew two varieties of corn crop okay in the field a and b okay he grew normal corn crop in field a and gm crop okay let's draw the one second okay we have two crop okay this is in is it crop grew two varieties of corn dog a and b he grew normal corn in field a ah, okay two fields we have students a and b okay in first one okay this is the normal one normal one means it is not genetically engineered no addition no none of the organic bio fertilizers nothing is used okay and here we have the modified one okay this is the modified one or the gm crop okay genetically modified crop now what is it what are they telling he observed the corn borers attack only field a okay they attacked only field a why because field a was normal crop so right? it was not genetically modified okay now to control it spores of bt were sprayed in the field so how do this bt work it will be given in a sachet you have to mix it with water and just uh, you know just sprinkle it on the plants now how do they work at a certain ph they will enter the larvae of larvae okay of the insect now what will they do going inside the stomach they will start you know uh, attacking the lining of the gut okay and they will start making pores now when they start making pores what happens students slowly the larvae will die okay that is how this bt works okay bt thuringiensis bt thuringiensis okay or, or bacillus thuringiensis so name the gene in the spores responsible for the control of pest your crystal protein okay crystal proteins 
Now, what effect will the spores of Bt have on the insect pest? That is what I told you. How has the field B developed the resistance against the pest? Because it is genetically modified. It is genetically modified to be pest resistant. Right? To be pest resistant. Yes or no? Clear? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, so here we have crystal protein, half marks, okay, 1 AB. Now, the spores of the BT, uh, BT contains, yeah, BT contains crystalline toxins, which is inactive. For this crystalline toxins, okay, they are inactive. They need some pH, they need some alkaline pH to get activated. That's what that's the reason if you just spray it on the plant, it will not get activated until a insect, until a specific insect whom we are targeting consumes it, it will not affect. That is the reason why GM crops are very safe or your uh, pesticides, which are biofertilizers, all that are very safe. Okay. Yes. So students, the spores of the BT cotton crystalline toxin, which is inactive. Now, what do they need? They need alkaline pH to get activated, which is present in the insect gut. Okay. The gut lining is broken down. So this is how it works. Mid gut epithelial cells become porous, swollen, and cell lysis will happen. Cells will start dying because they form spores. Now, the BT uh, toxin gene is cloned and inserted into the plant genome by recombinant DNA technology. Okay, so what are we doing? We are modifying the DNA of the plant in such a way that this plant is being. Uh, you know, it is pest control. This kind of pest will not affect them. So, we have modified it, okay, by not just spraying something on them, but we have changed the recombinant DNA. We have used recombinant DNA technology. Now, these genetically modified plants exp express the BT cotton genes and become pest resistance, okay. More detail we will teach you in class when I teach you biotechnology, okay. Yes, wait, this is, is it C... One second, students. Okay, one second. We have two more questions. Okay, here. Okay, lipoprotein lipase deficiency is a genetic disorder in which a person has genetic gene, okay, defective gene of lipase. This leads to high triglycerides. Okay, lipase, you know, breaks down fats. Okay, very simple. Lipase needs to be there to break down your fats. Yes, so no, if lipase is not there, what's happened? Accumulation of triglycerides will happen. Okay, stomach pain, fat deposits under the skin. It may eventually affect your liver, pancreas and may also cause diabetics. Okay, the disorder occurs if a child acquires defective genes from both the parents. Okay, that is autosomal recessive. Okay, now ERT is enzyme replacement treatment is one of the treatment offered to the patient with LPLD. That means your lipid, uh, lipoprotein lipase deficiency people, we give ERT which is an enzyme replacement treatment. Okay, that means to replace the enzyme. Lipase is not there. No? So, to uh, give that, you know, to make sure that deficiency is not there, we give ERT. So, what procedure is followed in ERT? What could be the possible drawbacks of ERT? And how can LPLD be treated using biotechnology? Okay, one one question we'll leave. First thing, what is the procedure? Okay, functional enzyme lipase is given to the patient by injection. Like how you give your insulin, how you give many other things like your antibiotics or your uh, vaccines, all this. We just inject it externally to this person because this person has lack of lipase. Okay. This procedure is not completely curative because definitely students, what body has to make, body only has to make. Okay. Externally, there is a limit how much we can give. Okay. Now, the disease can be treated by using gene therapy. Okay. How can we treat, treat the disease by changing or playing with the genes? Okay. Yes. Now, gene therapy is a collective, okay, so the explaining it is a collective of methods that allow correction of the gene. That is what I told you, simple way, just modifying the gene, okay, because injecting is not a solution. So, modifying, like how you know that dialysis is not the solution, transplantation is the solution, same way, injection is not the solution, gene therapy is the solution, okay, that has a defect and been diagnosed in a child or an embryo. Here, genes are inserted into a person's cells and tissues to treat the disease. Correction of genetic defect, okay, involves delivery of a normal gene into the individual or the embryo or the child, okay, to take over the function of or compensate for the non-functional genes. So, basically, how does it happen? By injecting a normal gene and it takes over the function. What function? 
forming lipases, breaking down the fat. So there is no accumulation of triglycerides, not causing the defect of pancreas or gallbladder or any of the liver or other parts. Okay. Yes. Give three reasons as to why prokaryotes are not given any figures for their diversity of by ecologists. First of all, prokaryotes itself is a very vast topic. It is very vast and it, it does not, I don't think there are enough technologies to put all the microbes in one place. Okay, there are a billion microbes and you all of you know that microbes are in places where human life is not possible. Now, how do you expect an ecologist to go there and find the microbes? It's not possible, right? He will die in search of the microbes. So, main reason is microbes are spread all over. The diversity is too much that it is difficult to put it into one place. Okay, and there are billions of microbes which are present most of the places where even man cannot go. Okay, humans cannot go. Okay, most of the places are in extreme condition. Thermoacidophils and all that, okay. Extreme condition. These are, this is, these are the two reasons why we cannot put prokaryotes very easily. Let's also see the answers. Okay, look here. Prokaryotic organisms diversity is not given any figures by the ecologist because of following this. First one. Classification and identification of the vast diversity of microbes is very difficult and cannot be efficiently done using whatever is available to us. For many microorganisms, it is difficult to culture them. Students, very important. We cannot culture all the microorganisms in the lab, especially even fungi or fungus. No, we cannot grow. Why, you know, in case by mistake you happen to open the petri plate or you opened it in the wrong way and there is spores scattered okay because you cannot see the spores spores have scattered the entire lab will get contaminated and it is not a simple thing because you all of you know there was outbreaks right in labs where a lot of people ended up dying because outbreaks are very serious so we cannot cultivate or we cannot culture any kind of microbes in the lab just because we want to know about them most of them are very dangerous and with the smallest outbreak it can contaminate the entire lab and we do not know what are the other things in the lab right there will be a lot of bacteria a lot of other things so it is very dangerous okay now according to the current biochemical very important current biochemical and molecular techniques it is estimated that microbes can range in billions with microbes inhabiting diverse habit on earth that is what i told you extreme conditions okay with enormous diversities present in air water and soil hence more advanced molecular and biochemical techniques are needed to classify and identify this enormous diversity of microbes done okay we are done with part okay c, c. yes so can we start section d students now yes yes now right section now. d is going to be a little special now why because in section d we'll be doing some competency based questions now in section d we only have two questions which are equally important let's do the first question now that is that's a big question don't be scared if you look at, look at such a big question it's going to be very very easy okay the structure below shows puc 18 which is similar to pbr 322 yes puc 18 which is also a plasmid vector which is similar to your pbr 322 in its function function is same that is transporting the gene of interest into the host function is same however they differ in some of their restriction sites and number of ori ori site is nothing but the more number of ori sites more copy number okay the ori number of pbr322 is approximately 20 so let me write down here the pbr322 Oh, approximately it has only sites how many 20 uh, but puc 18 small puc 18 has the approximate copy number of ori sites of your ori more than or equal to 100 so more than or equal to 100 ori sites are present in the case of puc 18 both are your plasmid vectors let's get to the question now how are puc 18 and pbr 322 used in biotechnological studies what is the application they're asking you the first basic application the only application main important application of your every single vector out there here a plasmid vector is to transport a gene of interest into the host organism that is the use of puc18 as well as the pbr 2022 you take a gene of interest you stab it on the plasmid and enter the make the plasmid enter into the host 
a gene of interest is inside the host now where it will start to self replicate inside the host body that is the biotech application of it now part number or see there is an all option here what will be the impact if ori site in a bone structure gets damaged now students remember in the case of plasmid ori site is a location through which a replication starts that is a duplication of a particular plasmid here happens if the ori site gets damaged there will be no replication inside the host it will not replicate at all it's like no i will not replicate option number b this is a separate question the lac z gene has ma has many recognition sites study the segment of dna given below and answer the question they have given you a segment here 5 prime to 3 prime oppositely 3 prime to 5 prime so we have an option here apply your knowledge of palindrome sequence what is the palindrome sequence palindrome sequence is a sequence which can be read same from either side Exam example is malayalam when you read from this side from starting or end the same meaning will come out amma also amma also yes mom also mom also <laughs> Identify and mark the possible regions where the restriction enzyme X will act. Where will the X will act? Now identify the parameter sequence. Very easy question. Free marks. If you notice here, here, can you see? Let me write on for you. A A T C T T T T C. Then we have G A A. So A A G A A G. Then we have T, then we have C T T T T. Can you see this is a palindrome sequence? If you read from here or from here, the same sequence will be happening, and this is where the enzyme X will cut in this particular segment of DNA. Then now option number B very important. Restriction enzyme Y was used to extract gene of interest from a plant. So we have a plant here. Now plant is there, and we are using restriction enzyme why to extract the gene of interest yes now this gene needs to be inserted into the given dna we are taking this gene from here this gene, one gene is there inserting into a new dna okay dna segment which has been treated with the restriction enzyme x now here also we need to make a cut for so that this gene this particular segment dna attached here to cut this particular segment of dna here we are using x right we are using x restriction enzyme here we are using y restriction enzyme and here using x restriction enzyme two different enzymes now will there be a successful recombination explain with the reason the first answer will tell you there will be no recombination we cannot add this segment of dna into this particular piece of dna why will you ask me the answer is very simple students remember the sticky ends caused by the y and the sticky ends caused by the x are completely different if there is no proper connection if i have 10 fingers here if i have two fingers here can i attach them properly no only when we have equal number of sticky ends on either side then only the recombination will happen otherwise it will not happen so remember every single time you're doing an experiment or when you're extracting and inserting the gene of interest you need to use the same type of restriction enzyme if you use different types of restriction enzyme there will be no proper recombination clear now option number c which one of the following two puc18 or pbr322 would you prefer for biotechnological study easy blindly i will choose which will give me more products yes imagine if you're trying to sell a product one product will sell only for a 20 people one product is very famous hundred thousand people will buy it which will you sell more thousand products right so here the copy number for oe sets for puc is more and hence if i want to do a biological biotechnological experiments i'll be using your puc 18 not pbr 322 clear here is the answer i guess yes here is the answer plasmid there is the application Plasmid which can be used to insert the gene of interest from the desired organism into the host. They act as vector to transfer the gene of interest into the host. Vector will help us to transfer the gene of interest into the host. Ori, origin of replication. No replication will take place resulting in no copy of DNA. If Ori site is completely damaged, no replication, nothing is happening. All waste, time waste. Now here, can you see option number B? 
that is there i am trying to i they are asking us to identify which is the palindrome sequence here which we already discussed now option then we have question number b the two that that was nothing but can we use the different types of restriction enzymes one for you know cutting the piece of dna one is for inserting no that is as the restriction enzymes needs to be the same which the cut which cut the dna of the plasmid and the gene of interest from the plant both needs to be the same only when both are same is you have good same sticky ends then only recombination will happen otherwise recombination will not happen then POC18 as it has higher copy rate blindly i'll tell the answer for that so let's solve the next question for from your competency only two questions are there not much the second question from your competency base is very simple observe the graph given below they have given you one big graph here do not be scared very easy question the graph represents inter-pacific interaction between the two species of paramecia two species of paramecia competing for the same resource in a culture medium so two different types of paramecia are there both are competing for the same resource here okay paramecium codatum codantum and paramecium aurelaria were grown in a separate culture as well we are growing them, them together or also we are growing them separately right codantum uh, were grown separately culture as well in a mixed culture it was found that each species grow in number according to the logistic equation they are not give, telling us how much they grow they are giving you a graph rest you should figure out what is the graph let's decipher the graph here now first we have two different lines here one is for aurelaria that is when it is growing alone when it is growing in a mixed culture so let us write down here when it is growing alone when it is growing alone number of paramecia when it is reaching high at the we draw a line here at the sixth rate can you see sixth rate is reaching highest when it is growing alone sixth rate is reaching 100 number easily sixth rate is reaching 100 number easily sixth rate 100 number now what about when it is growing what about when it is going in mixed culture mixed culture can you see it's going in mixed culture you can see the highest is here at the eighth day is the highest we're getting 80 when it is mixed it is eighth day we're getting 80 number of paramecia 80 number of paramecia so let them decide for your other species that is paramecia codatum Phantom. Now when it is growing alone, when it is growing alone, we have how many here? Let's see where is this alone? Yeah, here alone we are getting approximately, approximately. Can I say this highest is only here? At eighth day, it is giving us sixty. At eighth day, can you see this mark here? At eighth day, only sixty number of, sixty number of paramecia. When it is growing together, both are growing together, mixed culture. Can you see it is not growing at all? It is growing in a declined manner. The highest was what? The highest was only a sixth day here. Sixth day was no, sixth day, fifth day was the highest here. Fifth day highest, then was hardly 30. Fifth day, hardly 30. 13 number. Now, after this complete information, let's hear the question now. Okay. Which species is competing competitively superior out of those two which is reacting more, which is able to grow more when they are mixed cultures? You tell me now. Look at here. Aurelaria, when it is mixed on 8th rate, showing 80 number. Yes, it is growing properly, more 80 number you have seen. But your conatum is showing just 5th day 30. So you tell me which is the numbers don't lie. Yes, numbers don't lie. Which is the highest here? Obviously, Aurelaria is the highest that is a superior species here stay they're asking you support with the data provided in the graph this is the data you're supposed to write which day what is happening write all the data now state the underlying principle for the above result and name the scientist associated with the principle it's called as computation exclusive principle which states that when the two species which are competing together for the same resource 
one of them which is superior will completely win the other other one which is inferior will not be able to survive and eventually it will perish can you see eventually this was not completely enable so it is perishing eventually initially it raised initially when the resources are equal good it is able to survive but as soon as the resources are coming down as the time goes on the inferior one will perish it's given by gauss now explain the mechanism in which the two or more species Competing with each other can coexist. Now, is there a way can they can they coexist? Yes, they can. Like if you have in your house, uh, imagine you have your sibling, brother or sister. Now, if I have a sister in my house. Every single time we get a piece of cake, what do we do? We don't fight now. Before, in the as a kid, I used to take it and run away. Then after that, I was like the competitive one. I used to take the cake and run away. I should not give it to my sister. Now she's become smart. She'll cry. Okay. What she'll do is, as soon as the cake is coming to the house, she'll like split it into half. I will eat later, you eat now only. So what we'll do is, we take the cake, we split it into the half, half piece, I will eat that day only. Second half piece, she will eat it throughout the week. Okay, so what did we do there? We separated the resources into two. That is called as resource partitioning. Now this is a principle which is used in the nature of what's happening. That is, the best example is Darwin's finches. Darwin's finches were, some of them modified themselves so that they do not have to eat, feed on the same type of food. Some of them were insect eating, some of them were nuts eating, some of them were eating leaves. So did you see, the resource was partitioned and they were eating some other food. Or the feeding time intervals, some was eating in the morning, some eating in the evening. So they are completely resourcing, partitioning the resources there. That is the answer for your 30th. This is the answer. Oral area is the competitive one. Obviously I told you in numbers more quickly than the P. They are giving you the entire uh, data here which we already discussed competition principle which says that the two closely related species competing for the same resource cannot coexist independent indefinitely they cannot exist one has to completely perish someday one such mechanism for coexisting is resource partitioning if two species competing for the same resource they could avoid competition by choosing the different times for feeding I told you some will feed this time some will feed some other time or different foliage pattern that is different of leaves they can eat one can eat this type of leaf one can eat nuts one can eat you know insects to avoid competition they are doing everything possible to avoid competition so that everyone is benefited here everyone is able to survive and coexist due to the behavioral difference in their foliage activities that is the answer here foraging activity so two species can coexist if they are able to Come to a mutual understanding where we'll separate the products. Now we have the section. Oh, we have one more question. <laughs> no, we can come, it's fine. So we have one more question here. Graph A and B shows uh, show shown below depicts the interaction between two species, which indicates mutualism. Simple question. What happens in mutualism? In mutualism, both the species are benefited, both the species will grow together. If you look at the graph number B. Here, one species is growing, that is B is growing, but A is not growing or dying. It is at a constant rate. Can you tell, are they both in the mutualism? No. So let us know in the comment section, what is this B representing? They have asked you the question is A, but let us know in the comment section, what is the graph B telling us? Okay, which, which type of interaction? But if you look at the graph A, can you see both B and A species are increasing in number at the same time, that is, they are able to undergo and have a mutualism where both are benefited, both the organism are able to survive and you know, grow. So, answer would be A here. That is the end of competency-based questions. Competency-based questions are very fun, very, very fun to do. So, try to do as practice in competency-based question. Now, we'll be doing the last part of the sample paper. Yes. Right, ma'am? Yes. And the largest part. Largest part. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, section E, placed below are case studies of some couples who were not able to have kids. So, those who were not able to conceive, what are the assisted reproductive Reprotec technologies? Arts. Yes, arts that we will use. Okay. These couples are not ready for adoption or taking gametes from donors. After thoroughly examining the cases, which assisted reproductive technology will you suggest to these couples as medical experts? So, okay. they are asking you to become doctors now. They are yes. asking you to become doctors. And if you were a doctor, what would you suggest them? Yes, because they don't know about the art. You know about the art. So, which is actually correct depending on the situation. Because not every art works for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. 
So that is the difference. Okay. So let's, let's see the yeah. Directly we can read from here. It'll be easier. Yes. So couple number one month. Normal reports of female. The female is completely normal here. Hmm. Normal sperm and testis. But in the case of male, sperm is present in the testis healthy. Okay. Missing connection in the epididymis and vast difference in male. That means it's not reaching the location. Yeah, it yeah. is like when blockage is there in then, the middle, huh. the road is completely blocked. blocked. That is, the sperm is produced in the testis is not able to transport into the urogenital tract. So, okay. what are the solution, ma'am? What they can okay. do? So, see, semen will be devoid of sperms, obviously, because it's not reaching the blockage. Blocked. Yeah. So, in this case, so in vitro fertilization or your IVF by collecting the sperms from the epididymis. Followed by zipped. So what we have to do is we cannot expect the sperm to come from the epididymis to mass a difference. So what we will do? We will collect, yeah, collect the sperm from there. Yes. From there. We will just collect it from where the blockage is happening. Before Simple. blockage. Yeah. We... Wherever traffic jam is there, you take another road. No, same no, way. Okay. Definitely. Yes. And after that, what you do? You do test tube UB or you will do zygote transfer. Any of the normal and technique you can use. That depends on the blastomere again. Yeah. And it female is healthy, so any of it is going to be okay for her because even if it is after fertilization, you add it or you wait till the zygote formation and then do it, no problem. Get me transfer or zygote transfer. Okay. That is, they can do zipped or yeah, uh, zip transfer or IP. Okay. Because there's no problem with the fallopian tube, no problem with the uterus. Uterus. Yes. Couple number two. Blockage in the fallopian tube in the female. The female has a blockage oh. now. Normal reports of male. Just the ulta. Okay, exactly. just the ulta. Here also what? Road is blocked, right? Take the Production intro. is happening. Hmm. Yeah. So here what we will do again? Blockage of fallopian tube will not allow the transfer of sperm to the site. Problem. Right? Ampulla it has to come. Both have to meet. Meet. But. Road is blocked. Exactly. But this problem wasn't there in sperm. Why? Because we can take the sperm from there and just do it in the test tube. But here we expect the female body to help for the fertilization. Fertilization. That will not happen. So what we will do? Again, in vitro fertilization followed by test tube baby IUT. It would involve transfer of embryo with more than eight blastomeres. IUT. Okay, very important. More than eight blastomeres. So you cannot put it below eight blastomere stage. You cannot do zift. You have to do IUT. Okay. Because zift, if I had to zift, uh, fallopian tube is needed. Yes, fallopian tube has to favor. Okay. Couple number three. Normal reports of female. Female is normal now. Poor semen parameters in terms of count. Modality and morphology of the male total partner. Total damage. Okay. <laughs> okay. Total damage. Total damage. <laughs> okay. Count also is not there. Movement also is not there. Nor the morphology okay. to reach the ovum is there. Okay. <laughs> Nothing is there. Yeah. So, so what do we give, ma'am? Directly intracytoplasmic sperm, sperm injection. injection. Sperm is directly injected into the ovum, ovum because ovum. we are not letting the sperm because sperm is not will not be able to, to reach. Move. Okay, will not be able to travel. Mm -hmm. Upon that, count is also less. So, you cannot expect that out of the million, one will go and fuse. So, what you have that to do? That happen. Yeah, we have to do direct, direct injection. injection. Okay. Like you're taking directly, aeroplane you're taking and <laughs> landing yeah. it there. So, artificial insemination procedures is used mainly when the sperm have poor characteristics this, or low, low sperm, sperm count. count. Now, this also, chances are very less because usually when the motility and the count and the morphology also is weak, but chances of the sperm and fertilization happening also is very this. Difficult. difficult. Okay. Yes. Couple number four, low ovarian reserve in the female. Now, in this case, the reserve of the ovum is less, less. than the case of the female. Normal reports in female. The male, male is normal. Mm. Again, ulta. Mm. That is low ovarian reserve in the case of female. Mm. Now, what is happening? Again, in vitro fertilization Tradition. by selection of a normal blastosis from the ovary followed by your zygote intra fallopian transfer involving transfer of zygote. Okay? Or IoT can also be IOT, take, take care of yeah. it because we took the Egg already died from the yes, ovary. so it depends on that's why it's sir told in the starting it's a blastomere count depends on the doctor because yeah. they will understand this is just a condition, but there are other lot of factors, so, lot of parameters, yeah, like, lot of parameters which will affect. So it is up to the doctor if they want to do after eight or before eight stage, okay, blastomere stage. Now, the poor ovarian reserve, no, no, no different. poor ovarian reserve in the female, <laughs> morphologically abnormal sperm in the male partner. So, what do you do now, ma'am? Now, both. See, sperm, the only option is it is morphologically abnormal. So, we have to do oh, injection. Injection. Okay, that is injection. your intracytoplasmic inge uh, sperm injection. And then we can do uh, poor. So, after intracytoplasmic sperm injection, we are expecting that even though ovarian reserve is poor, less, it will be fine. Okay, because one See, day. Even we are... the reserve is less. What we have to do is again, we have to do IVF itself. We can do IVF or IUT directly. Yes. Okay. Fertilization. Yes. Now again, this is our question, I believe. Yeah, this is the contraceptives. Huh. 
plus minus one. It's very okay. easy. Very yeah, easy. Very, very easy. easy. Okay. Requirement. So first, we'll just see what is uh, the requirements for the contraceptive. Name, name of the contraceptive mode of action. Okay. This will be given to you. These two will columns will not be given to you. Any time. See, sometimes they can give this. Yeah. They cannot give this. this. Any of this can go missing. missing. Okay. Missing. This is very kind of CBC to put like this in one order. Yeah. Usually it's not like this. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Now, blocking of the entry of the sperm through the cervix. Okay. Now, here, some of them will write condoms. Condom. Now, this is where some of them can even go wrong, but it's technically correct. Yeah. Technically correct. That is the male, female condoms. But, since they have mentioned cervix here specifically, you need to write diaphragm, cervical caps as well as vault is the answer, answer. proper. Yes, so covers the cervix during the coitus. Okay. Hmm. Now, spacing between the children. That means uh, they have the child first. Now, they want a four years, two years gap, gap between the... First and the second, second, child. second child, what they can do, they can do IUDs. The that most the used uh, you know, common, yeah, common contraceptive in India. Intrauterine um, devices. Devices. Okay, yeah. IUD, sorry. Uh, IUD. IUD. Yes. So that is your uh, copper T is there, copper 7 is there, multi load 375 is there. Okay. Cholesterol so you know how it happens? Continuously, copper will be released, which will actually reduce the mortality of the sperm. It does not give the hospitality for the sperm to enter. It will be basically create, yeah, basically create a complete blockage for the sperm and also makes the mucus very thick, so the sperm does not enter. Clear? That is a complete change in the. Your... I think I do faster than in one second. I do the entire thing. No, I'm short on this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, effective emergency, emergency contraceptive. contraceptive. Now, this is an emergency pill where. There was 72, a, hours. 72 hours cap, you're supposed to take a pill and this pill will have the hormones. It could be progesterone or estrogen or a combination of both. Yes. Right? Yes. And what we'll do, we'll make sure the ovulation does not happen or implantation does not happen and alter the quality of the cervical mucus. That it makes the cervical mucus extremely thick. Mm. And if the cervical mucus is extremely thick, the sperm cannot move through it. Yes. Hormonal changes. Hormonal changes. Okay. And obviously the... Uh, IUDs are also there. Yes, IUDs. That's what I told you. Here, both the things are the same. Hmm. Okay, they basically make the sperm not to enter and does not provide the hospitality or the environment for the sperm. Full to... so it becomes yeah. sometimes. Yes, yes. Okay. Terminal method to prevent any more pre pregnancy female is a surgical method is tubectomy. In the case of complete is... family planning done, you can go for tubectomy or, or methotomy in the case okay. of male. Yeah. Next question. Mama, I'll do this question okay. and then uh, you can do the next question if you want. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Given below is a stretch of DNA showing the coding strand of the structural gene of a transcription unit. They have given you a structural gene here. They have given you a they have given you a coding strand. See, they have given a coding strand here of a structural gene. So you have a 5 prime to 3 prime coding strand here. Write the corresponding template strand and mRNA strand that will be transcribed along with its polarity. Now, very simple. Remember. First is the template strand. They are asking you template strand. Always remember, if your coding strand is run, running from 5 prime to 3 prime, your template strand will stand from 3 prime to 5 prime. That is the polarity first. The next difference here is your coding strand and template strand are completely opposite. The, it is they are completely opposite. The only difference here is in the case of your template strand, adenine will be changing. Wherever you find A, we'll be replacing with T, and uh, wherever you find G, we'll be replacing with C. Simple difference. That is your template strand. For example, we have ATG here. ATG. So instead of A, we'll be adding T. Instead of T, we'll be adding A. And instead of G, we'll be adding C. That is the basic difference. Similarly, you're supposed to make the entire strand like this, one after another. The first answer is 10. Now, what about? mRNA synthesis. mRNA synthesis again very easy. Again we have the opposite of this. That is mRNA will run from 5 prime to 3 prime. Now here I'll tell you one small cheat code. Your mRNA will be exactly like your coding strand. Coding strand. The only difference, the only difference here is your adenine, sorry, thymine will be converted to your uracil. So everywhere we have thymine you are supposed to change it to uracil for your mRNA. That's it. That is the only difference here. Now, what about in the back? Let's see the in the bacterium. Now they have given you if GUA of transcribed mRNA. When we have a, once we have the mRNA in the transcribed mRNA, GUA is a intron. Despite the 
R is dominant, so three will be red, one will be white. Yes. Uh, next, they are telling you red is incomplete dominant. So if there is incomplete dominance, yes, partial, partial, partial this one, no? so partial. yes. See here, this was we already done it. Hmm. In incomplete dominance, partial dominance that is crossing with R R and R and small R. So in the incomplete dominance, what happens? The pink coat is also coming in. Mixing has happened. So red is not able to completely dominate over the white, and that's why we have the pink color cow here, not the red dominance. Yeah, here. this is the same thing. You have you have your purple and white and pink and red, pink and white. Pink Anything, and white. Any of that they can no. give. That's it, no? Last question, ma'am. Yes. Explain the role of primary and secondary lymphoid organs with the help of a suitable example and with the help of a flowchart, illustrate how an infected animal cell can survive while a virus are being replicated or released. This is totally about your HIV and this is all about your spleen, thymus, bone marrow, everything. Okay, let's see. Now students, look here. Lymphoid organs, what are they? They are organs basically for origin, that means for maturation and for differentiation. Correct? Now primary, when I talk about primary, whom am I talking about? I am talking about my bone marrow and thymus. Right? Bone marrow and thymus. Who is getting, uh, you know, matured or differentiated here? Your lymphocytes B, right? Both lymphocytes, uh, B cells and T cells are forming here. That is bone marrow. Both the production is happening. One is getting differentiated in the thymus. One is getting differentiated in the bone marrow. That is why they have B cell and T cell name, right? Then after differentiation, where will they go? After maturation, the lymphocytes migrate to the secondary lymphoid organs like the spleen, lymph nodes, tonsils, pears, patch of the small intestine and the appendix. The secondary lymphoid organs provide the site for interaction of the lymphocytes. So they have actually come to the battlefield. Where is that? Secondary lymphoid. In the primary, they are just trained how to be in the battlefield, how to fight, okay, how to do cell mediated immunity is done in the primary, okay. Training is done, like how you have school, then you have college, same way. Now in the secondary lymphoid, they are actually going to fight, okay. Yeah. Which will then proliferate to become effector cells, okay. Now, the bone marrow is the main lymphoid organ where all the blood cells including lymphocytes are produced, right? All of you know this? Yes. Now, the thymus is a lobed organ, okay, located near the heart and beneath the breastbone. That is your sternum, okay, in the media sternum. Media sternum is where this thymus is located. Now, both bone marrow and the thymus provide micro -envir environment for development. That is maturation. That environment they provide for that training, okay, is possible, okay? Yes. Now, the spleen is the large bean-shaped bean -shaped, uh, organ. It is mainly contain lymphocytes and phagocytes. This we had done in our NCRT line-by-line -line question. S copy paste of NCRT, okay? Now, it acts as the filter of blood by trapping blood-borne diseases, microorganisms. Spleen also has a large reservoir of erythrocyte. Okay, this also we know. And spleen is a graveyard of your RBC. Red blood cells. Red blood cells. Now, the lymph nodes. So, students, this lymph, what is it? Basically, when the interstitial fluids are coming, that means from the capillaries, your WBC, some water, some dissolved materials are uh, oozing out. So, that liquid is called interstitial liquid. That will be taken up by whom? That will be taken up by your lymph. Right. And whatever is there in the lymph is called as your lymph, lymphatic fluid or your lymph fluid. I don't know why did I write lymphatic fluid. Okay, you can write simple words, student. Don't complicate. Okay, lymph, oh, lymph, lymph fluid. Okay. Now, in that they have nodes. Okay, they have nodes. So, look here. Lymph nodes are small solid structures located at different points along the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes serve to trap the microorganisms or the other antigen which happens to get into the lymph and the tissue fluids. Antigens trapped in the lymph nodes are responsible for the activation of lymphocytes present there and cause the immune response. This also I have explained you when I taught you body fluids and circulation. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to know. Just know about the lymph nodes. They will trap the microorganism or the antigens which are coming and basically protect the body. Okay. Now, students, all of you know about malt. Right. This is a mucus lining in the lymph vessel. So, associated lymphoid tissue, malt, it constitutes about 50%. Again, same line of NCRD. Say 50% of lymphoid tissue in human body. Okay. Now, let's go. Okay, next question was this, your HIV. I don't think I have to explain because that much 
Cre- like I've explained it really good in your human health and diseases and when I spoke about AIDS, right? So students, HIV is your human immuno, <laughs> human immuno deficiency virus. Okay, so this virus, what does it do? It gets into our body and manipulates our nucleus. Okay, so what is happening? Retrovirus, it will enter. How do will uh, how will it enter? They have a receptor called the CD4 receptor. This CD4 receptor is only with three people. Who are they? Macrophages. Dendritic cells, dendritic cells, and your T cells. Out of this, macrophages is the factory of your HIV. T cells will be killed if HIV enters. Okay, because it knows that T cells is for protection. What do they do? They attack. Who attacks? Your G one twenty. Oh, don't. Yes, G one twenty on the HIV. That is. right the glycoprotein will go and attach to the cd4 receptor on the macrophages and then enter into the cell okay once they enter what will they do student they'll release the genetic material the rna into the cell that rna will go and manipulate our nucleus and ask our nucleus to form their proteins okay so it is manipulation is happening and they will go and form their proteins and multiply and make more that is why macrophages are called the factory of hiv all the formation or the production happens in the macrophages once they enter the t cell they will make sure that the t cell dies because they know that t cells will not allow us to survive so they will kill the t cells if they are affected clear or not this okay so did we yes students very important reverse transcriptase okay reverse transcriptase because of why hiv is very very strong okay because it can convert rna to dna Okay. Yes. Full double. Reverse in a drop, ma. Yes. That's it, right? That's it, ma'am. The entire paper is over. So there it is. The entire CBSE paper. Let us know in the comment section if you want us to solve more papers before your board examination, and we'll be doing that for all of you. Yes. So can you tell me? Yes, students. Ah, uh, so all of you know it was Vasant Panchami. Okay. So this week everyone celebrates, does a lot of puja at home and all yes. that. So we thought, why not give you something really exciting? Okay. That is your mock paper series, because now that the applications are out, you do not have the time to waste. Check out how how to crack okay. need. No, that's no not. No new strategy. Right. New strategy. No. No new strategy is going to work. Whatever strategy you have, just make sure it is stronger and. There is a lot of mock tests into that, so quickly go. The first link that you see on the description will be your uh, Vidya Kul series, Vidya Kul mock series. Click on that, enroll, and it is for free. Free. Obviously, we give free things on the channel. Yes, we have been giving free th- things for almost two months now, and I don't know how many of you are utilizing it. I think a lot of them are utilizing, utilizing it. it. But some of them, yeah. So they were still waiting for the last one month for need examination. I don't know why, ma'am. So then that time nothing is going to be free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a Telegram channel. You can join Telegram channel. Every single notes, updates, everything will be updated on this Telegram channel. That is right our Vedantu Need English, English Telegram channel. channel. Okay. So, so yes. Thank you so much, students. Let us know in the comment section how was session and if you want us to do more sessions like this. Bye. Bye bye.